So now it's time for part three of Sonic Triple Chop. And I still don't like this. It's another level where it's kind of difficult to figure out where exactly to go, and it's pretty easy to drown, too. And Sonic is pretty sluggish underwater. Oh, great, a spring that continues straight up into spikes. Wonderful. A fun fact, the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog design of Eggman is seen in the American and European front box cover in this game. Like, he's he's got the black and red eyes, like in the cartoon. I always hated that design. Because, like, why are his eyes black and red in the first place? Eggman is a human. He's never been established to be a cyborg. I mean, they should at least say that to explain why he looks that way. And even if they did, I still wouldn't like the design very much. And he looks that way in the cartoon because... In Sad AM, they're trying to make Eggman look like a threat. Like he's a threatening villain. But I prefer villains that, ha that are sympathetic. And more importantly, are complicated. They don't necessarily have to be sympathetic. As long as they actually feel like real people. Grounded multi-dimensional characters who are written well as a result. Eggman is not a multi-dimensional character. He's, he's as one-dimensional as you can get. He's evil because the series needs a villain. He's a mad scientist who's arrogant and has a robot army. And that's as generic as you can get. So I can't really take him seriously as a threat because he doesn't remind me of any actual villains in the real world. He doesn't come off as a real character to me. He just comes off as a villain for the sake of having a villain. So because he doesn't feel real to me, I can't think of him as a threat. So I just roll my eyes when they just portray him as purely threatening. It's like how it's like how they portray Ganon in Zelda games. There's no the only time they ever give his character any depth is in Wind Waker. And even then, it does so by giving, by mentioning depth that was never there in Ocarina of Time. And so it just comes off as just giving him um, character motivation out of nowhere. My point is that if a villain is too one-dimensional, then I don't really care that he's portrayed as threatening. It doesn't actually strike a chord with me or anything. It's, it's only when a villain is multi-dimensional that I really care that he's a threat. And like, I have to hate the villain. That's another thing. I don't hate Eggman because I don't care enough about him to hate him. Because he doesn't... He's, he's arrogant and evil, but in a typical cartoony mad scientist fair, and I'm never gonna meet anyone like him in real life. I don't have a personal reason to have a grudge against him. He's evil and he's against the environment and ooh. And I care about nature too, I guess. I mean, the I mean there wouldn't be enough oxygen in the world and so everyone would die if there wasn't enough nature and stuff. Because plants provide our oxygen. And I guess the world would die if all the oceans were polluted. But I'm not really all that passionate about the environment, so I don't really care that Eggman pollutes the environment. Besides, I'm a lot more on the technology and industrial side of things. Especially since technology doesn't necessarily have to be environmental polluting. It can- there can potentially be technology that doesn't pollute the environment or anything. That is still awesome. And futuristic. And accomplishes all our needs. Gives us, all, gives us all our energy. Of course, that won't be for quite a long time because green energy sources today don't give us nearly enough energy, especially wind power. Like, it gives us just a, such an inconsistent amount of power because wind is inconsistent. So I don't really like it when they portray Eggman as threatening because of that. He's, he's too cartoony to be threatening. He's like Ganon if you try to portray him as threatening. 
Eggman was originally designed as a comical villain. That's why he was called Eggman. This section of the level is really annoying. It's so easy to... It's so easy to fall back down. It's so easy to drown. And you don't have very much horizontal momentum when you're jumping up from that rising platform. So it's really easy to not make the jump. So yeah, they used, they used the wrong design of Eggman for the box art of the international versions of this game. Because the cartoons were really popular at the time for some reason. So they, I guess they just wanted to take advantage of the cartoons as much as they could to advertise the games. It's just like how they called Amy Princess Sally in the American Manual Sonic CD. Because she was from the cartoons. And they wanted to draw in sales, even though it was pretty obvious looking at Amy that she was not Sally. And speaking of box art, in Sonic 2 for the Master System, it has its Western box art actually features skeleton B enemies. And no enemy like that was ever found in the actual game. I guess it was scrapped because they couldn't find a they couldn't find a proper place to put the skeleton bees. Maybe a Halloween themed level? Oh, this is bullshit! How are you supposed to know that floor crumbles in the first place? That's trial and error! That is cheap! The only way you know that that floor falls away is if you fell down it before. Because it looks exactly like all the other floors. So, you have to memorize where it is and jump at exactly the right time. I'm okay with these tubes being here because it's not like it's a maze. You're just progressing through the level with them, like in Chemical Plants. But it's so hard to dodge the falling spike ball sometimes because you move so slowly. And you're sent to a bubble when you don't want to until you have to jump to get out of it. That's another thing, you couldn't jump to get out of bubbles in Sonic 2 and S. So you have to jump here, because if you just move forward, then you won't be able to move fast enough to avoid falling down with the crumbling floor. And you'll go into a falling animation that will trap you and force you to fall down. I've heard that Knuckles really doesn't have a falling animation in Sonic 3 Knuckles. And speaking of Knuckles, he was actually originally conceived to be pink. And I don't know why, he was always meant to be a guy, so I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to make a guy character, and a traditionally manly one at that, pink. This boss is annoying. I figured out a good strategy for beating him now, but... It's so easy to get hit here. In previous 8-bit Sonic games, when you fought a boss underwater, Sonic would spontaneously grow the ability to breathe underwater and then lose it afterwards. But in this game, he gets air periodically. When you jump into Knuckles, you, you get sent backwards right away. And sometimes you can get sent backwards towards the bombs or missiles. The best strategy for dealing with this guy is to, start, is to spin dash from the left side of the screen and jump into him. Just constantly spin dash jump. Yeah, I died to this guy. He's really annoying. But even if you do the spin dash jump strategy, you can still get hurt by the bombs and the explosion they create. I played this game a couple times, like... I remember when I first tried it out, I died to the first boss. And then, knowing about the mid-air spin, I got a little further and I died to Sunset Park Act 3. And then I beat it for my written review. And then, months later, I went to Sonic Gems Collection for the Tails run. And I got hopelessly stuck in Tidal Plant Zone and wasn't able to beat it. And again, I don't see any difference between the Adventure DX port and Gems Collection port. 
Okay, this is weird. Why does he disappear? He acts like he was drowning there. Like, it would have made a lot more sense if they bothered to have Eggman come in and kidnap Knuckles with a crane. Because we see later that he's kidnapped. Oh god, not this level. This level is such a maze. This is one of the worst levels I've ever played. I need a guide to know how to get through here. I followed a video guide and I still got lost. So, I'm gonna read off instructions here. For Act 1, you start out and you jump right through blocks as soon as you start. Jump up on a spring. You're sent into a tube. Go up and right. And keep holding right as you're sent out of the tube to get into the next one. And in the next tube, you just keep going right until you reach a tube and fall into it. And then keep going down until you hit the floor. Then you go right to a checkpoint, probably this one. Keep going right, jump through blocks, and a spring will send you up to a tube. I think we're reaching that part, but... Why are there enemies between springs? It's so cheap. Then you jump back into the tube, and you hold left as you're sent falling back out of it, so that you land on a, a raised area. I think here is where I start getting hopelessly lost. Because I was, I was pressured to rush, because I was following along with the video guide, but I was also recording. And I didn't want to be standing around for too long. So you have to take that tube to go through there and get to here. Ugh, I hate these slow moving elevators. I love the music though. Like it's so fast paced and awesome. And it's another song that, when it's remixed, it loses all the original feeling of it. Yeah, I got hopelessly lost. I knew I was lost by this point, so I just gave up and died intentionally. And I restarted at the checkpoint. Heh, <laughs> that was an epic fail. And ironically, your, your time limit completely restarts when you die from a checkpoint and restart it. So, I, I lost all my lives, and I restarted from continue, and yet I still restarted from checkpoint. That's awesome. I guess that's why they call this game easy. So, you reach a checkpoint, and then you just keep going right. And you jump through blocks, and a spring will send you into a tube. Jump back into that same tube. Hold left as you're falling out of it. So that you can you can land on that raised area there. It's kind of hard to time it. And then you just jump to the right and just keep going right into the slow moving section. So get into a tube and then go down from that into a cannon. Go right from that cannon and that's how you get to the goal. I was following a speed run, and I still couldn't- I still had trouble doing this in one take. Because I was pressured to go as fast as possible, and that meant I couldn't keep stopping the video and looking at it. Because if I just looked at the video, then I would run into enemies and fail my platforming. Okay. Ugh, I hate this section. Like, it has such a slow beginning, like, what is the point of these slow-moving elevators? What does this contribute? Why is this a good thing at all? And this was actually, a. Uh... This isn't my first take, let's put it that way. This isn't my first take of Act 2. I cut out my failures because I just had so many of them and I got so lost. Those are from Sonic 2 from Master System, only they're blue. The first tube sends you up into a cannon. Go left from the cannon and you'll be sent into a tube. When you're sent out of that tube, you have to hold up to get into another tube. And then go down after being sent to the right. There. You're here. 
keep jumping right until you fall into a tube that will send you to the left. When you land on those things, it causes the it causes the ball shooters to automatically shoot balls, so you gotta wait until you can jump forwards. This is a pretty platformy level. I don't really see any loops. I don't, I don't necessarily mind that though. And the screen crunch isn't a problem because here you're just jumping up, so it's not a big deal. God, I hate this level. Okay, after that, go left and jump through blocks to get to another tube. Yeah. J jump through blocks to get through another tube that sends you into a cannon. Go right from the cannon. I kept looking at the guy, and that's why I'm stopping. Now, you land here, jump right. There's a couple more cannons from here. Super peel out, and jump. And that's how you get to that cannon really easily. You go up from the cannon, then right for the second one, you get to the goal. I meant to do the super peel out the first time, but I was I was at the rightmost part of the platform, so I just fell. And so the timing was too precise for a super peel out jump, I guess. But seriously, that level is hell. In fact, I would dare say that it's worse than Scrambled Egg Zone because I have in my hand a whole list of instructions about how to get through this level. Because it is such a maze. It is such a labyrinth. It's so open-ended. There's so many different paths you can take. So you can spend forever here. I have a list of what to do to get through both acts of Atomic Destroyer Zone. It is... Well, let's see how many lines long it is. 17 for Act 1. 30! 30 lines for the zone as a whole. Let's see how long the instructions are for Scrambled Egg Zone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 lines long. And even then, it's only that long because I insist on making in full sentences. Because I could have just easily written in, in only the form of arrow directions. Like, for Act 1's tube maze of Scramble Egg Zone, I just go down, right, left. I don't even have to have full sentences for that. Just drawings of arrows. For Act 2, I just write, hold right, then left. That's it. Scramble Egg Zone is fine once you know what to do. It, it, still, it still is a badly designed level, but at least if you have... And, and you don't always know when you're supposed to press the directions in the tube mazes. But... It just says something that's such a larger list of instructions to so get through Atomic Destroyer Zone without taking forever. That zone is just horrible. And I'm never going through that level again.